And with a good understanding of how different mapping systems work, we can actually go into how to use them. So today we're going to be covering topography, what it means, how it works, how to use it. We'll also be talking about compasses and all of their fun little nuances. And then piecing all of that together in order to help you create a navigational checklist in order to get you from point A to point B. Now, if you haven't seen our latest nav video on latitude, longitude, UTM, and MGRS, highly suggest that you go and watch that first. It'll explain a lot of the other features and how to read the coordinates and get you from A to B as well. This is more detailed into what you're going to see and route planning comes into play more. Now you can catch up on those videos and the links down below. Uh, and if you're just here as a refresher, chapters are labeled on the video as well. Feel free, skip around, do what you need to do. Now, topography maps, also known as topo maps, are a linear two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional feature. Now, they use elevation subsections, also known as contour lines. Now, the legends we talked about in the last video will have what's known as the contour interval. This lets you know the exact change in elevation between each contour line. Now, with that, you can derive a few different things. One, it's going to be the closer that the contour lines are together, the steeper the feature is going to be. And the farther apart that the contour lines, the flatter the terrain feature or the more gradual it will be. This system also allows us to identify terrain features. The first is going to be the easiest to identify, and that's going to be a peak. A peak is where the contour line is completely enclosed with no other contour lines on the inside. It is the highest point in elevation of that feature. Now from peaks, we get three more common features. The first is going to be the very muzzly mediator of land navigation, also known as saddles. They are the low points between two peaks. And uh, when you don't want to confront Pop Peak, and you just want to squeeze on by to get where you want without the extra effort, saddles provide a really nice, easy way to circumnavigate the peak and continue about your merry way. Now, the second feature is going to be ridge lines. Now, ridge lines are shown on topo maps where the contour lines form a V, with the V that is pointing away from the peak. They are going forth and doing Papa Peak's good works. Ridge lines are the golden child of peaks. It's where you will find the easiest walking and expend the least amount of energy in order to climb to a peak or over very steep terrain. Lots of wildlife also like easy travel. So ridge lines are a great place in order to run into Bambi. They are also a great place for epic scenic shots of the landscape and where your silhouettes will stand out the most. Take that for what you will. Now, the third feature from the peak is its rebellious, troublemaking, redheaded stepchild, drainages, also known as draws. Now, these are shown as Vs on the map as well, but those these Vs are pointing towards the peaks, just like a rebellious kid to his parent, giving him, you know, all that sass. Now, drainages are great places to find water-saturated areas and very thick vegetation. It also happens to be some of the most challenging terrain in order to travel through due to, well, a little thing called gravity. So imagine drainages as taking all of the trash and leftovers from the family of land navigation and it never cleans the room, ever. It also tends to be a really good place to hide because, well, nobody wants to go in there and try to find a needle in the haystack. They also happen to wreak havoc on communications because, well, you got walls. And the cone of silence, line of sight, becomes an issue. Now, for the compass. Yeah, whatever, it points north, right? Well, no, actually, it points to magnetic north, which happens to be different all over the world. It's speculated that the Earth has a molten iron core. Nobody's been there, obviously, so hard to tell for certain. But with that theory in place, it stands to reason why the Earth has its own electromagnetic field. Spinning around that a bunch, and well, black magic also known as science, means that the Earth has its own protective electromagnetic field, which is both protecting the planet from things like solar flares and radiation and space, 
but it also pulls compasses from true north and the fluctuation of that magnetic field shifts every single year. This is where the declination diagram for your maps really come into play. It tells you at the time that that map was created, this is what the deviation from true north was for this area. So that with all of that, you can do some quick math and find out what degree on the compass actually points to true north for the region that you're working in. This is especially important when we want to orient our map. Now, map orientation has absolutely nothing to do with how it identifies or feels. It has everything to do with correctly or accurately aligning the map to the surrounding features, revealing the truth of the area beyond what you can actually see. Now to make it a little easier to remember how to find true north, remember the phrase east is least, west is best. Now what that means is that when you see your declination diagram, if it's pulling to the east, you are subtracting the variation from 360 degrees, also known as magnetic north. And if the declination is pulling to the west, you add that variation from the declination diagram to zero degrees, which also happens to be magnetic north. Once you know what magnetic pull is your true north for your area, you can use a compass and a map in order to properly align the world around you with the map. All you have to do is take the graduated straight edge or the longest flattest edge of your compass and put it in line with the Northern guideline or place it on true North guideline, depending on what your map has. Now, if you don't have one of these, then you use the North South running grid line with the top of the compass pointing towards North or the top of the map. Once it's aligned with the grid line, you move the map and compass together until the true north degree shows up under the indicator line. Uh, that works with a Lenzatic military style compass. Now, if you're using something like a Sunto compass, it's a little bit different. What you're going to do, so you have a north indicator arrow at the top of the compass, and you'll rotate your rotating bezel until your true north indicator directly in line with your north arrow on the compass, which is that little guy right there, that guy. Once that's there, you would still do the same thing. Take the longest graduated straight edge of the compass, put it in line with the north-south running grid line with the top of the compass ported, pointing towards north, and you will move the map and the compass together until your north seeking arrow falls in line with the box. Now the map is oriented. Now be aware that this works best in a relatively flat surface and that the compass operates using magnetics. If you have metal or electronics close by, especially ferrous metals or active electronics, it won't work. EMFs are crazy. Electromagnetic fields will wreak havoc on all of your land navigational tools. So remove electronic devices, radios, pens, all that sort of stuff. Anything that has a magnetic feature to it should be nowhere near any of your map and compass work. Now, once your map is oriented and aligned with your surroundings, we can use it for navigation. Most purchase maps are large. And depending on whether you may want to have your map out constantly, I highly doubt it because it gets in the way. So well, what we can do is before we start navigating everywhere, we can take the map out once and create for ourselves a cheat sheet. First, we need to find where we are. Easier said than done. There's a lot of other cool ways of doing it. You can do triangulation or GPS, or you can just know intersections to roads and be like, yep, that's where we are, we're right there. Once we know where we are, and we know where we're trying to get to, we wanna write it down, write the coordinates down. Just take any time, just put it down. Pen and paper are awesome. When you write it down, make sure that you are writing the coordinates in the same system that your map is in. Nobody wants to have to do all the maps and all the math and convert latitude and longitude into MGRS. Just use what your map has. 
we're going to find the magnetic heading that we want to take from point A to point B. And then we're going to write that down. Now, we can do this a couple of different ways. With the lensatic compass, we're going to take that graduated straight edge again. And we're going to start with the zero tick mark down at the bottom of the compass on point A. And the running portion of the straight edge is going to go through point B. Right? That's going to be the graduated straight edge. Or, if it's not long enough, you can use the lanyard from the compass in a line with the graduated straight edge and draw it out all the way through point B. If you are using a Sunto style compass, same thing. You're going to start with your graduated straight edge point, the bottom of the compass, at point A, and it will be running through point B. In order to get the magnetic bearing or heading that you're going to be taking, you are again going to rotate the rotating bezel around until your north seeking arrow lines up with inside of the north seeking box. And then you'll go off of the northern indicator of, or the heading indicator of the compass. For the lensatics, once you have the graduated straight edge running from A to B, all you have to do is look directly underneath your indicator line and it tells you what your magnetic heading is between A and B. If you're not using a lensatic compass or a Sunto and you have other tools like a protractor, you are still going to start off on point A, but with the grid set up the way that it is, you need to do a little bit of math first. Now, with a protractor, you're going to start with the center point, wherever that knot is tied dead in the center of your protractor, on point A. You also want your northern indicator to be in line with grid north of the map, right? You can see that by the horizontal hash marks. Whatever is going to be closest, you want them to be parallel and perpendicular with all your grid lines, make sure that they match up. From there, you're gonna take your cordage from the center of the protractor and you're gonna draw it straight out through point B. And then wherever that line is crossing on the outside edge of your protractor, you're gonna take that number and depending on your declination diagram, you will either add or subtract your declination in order to give you the heading from A to B. Again, a little bit more math, but the nice thing about a protractor is that when you're doing it, your map doesn't have to be oriented because there's no magnetics involved. And you can have your electronics out and other various tools. So pros and cons to both. More math, less math, both work. Either way, you're still going to record all of that information down for your heading. Once you have that figured out, now you need to record the distance. The graduated straight edge, on a lensatic compass already has a bunch of tick marks uh, in a preset scale for most military maps. And as long as the scale that you're utilizing of your map is the same or proportionate, you can just look down and quickly assess how far it is from A to B. Now with a Sunto, there's a couple of different situations. They have different scales on it. And you can further extrapolate, well, it's about this distance as you're going through, and that clear portion allows you to, again, figure out the distance from A to B. Another good tried and true way of getting the distance from A to B is using the lanyard or the cordage of lensatic compass, or using the cordage of the protractor, and just draw the line from A to B, pinch it off, and hold it up then you bring that down towards your scale and you just start counting it out now once we have all that stuff we can get into the real meat and potatoes of land navigation and that is terrain evaluation this is where we're going to create the majority of our cheat sheet we're going to document all of the major terrain features not all of them but every single one that the map is telling us that we should be seeing along the route from point A to point B. We're also going to document at what distance we should be seeing those features. For example, 
Uh, if we're gonna be hitting 150 meters, we should be seeing, say, uh, a crossing a stream of some sort. And that stream should be running from east to west. Then at about 200 meters or so, we should crest over a ridge line and uh, exit of woods into a clearing at about 400 meters. We want to write all that down in order to allow us to gain confidence that we are on track to our final destination. We also want to know about how long it's going to take us to get there. Now, a good rule of thumb when you're dealing with land navigation as to figuring out distances and time, how that weighs, is that the average person walks roughly one kilometer in about 45 minutes. Yes, I get it. Some of you are wicked fast. And also some are, well, not. Don't forget to take into consideration the terrain features. The flat and level open terrain, you will move much faster. Whereas thick vegetation and extreme changes in the topography will drastically slow you down and it will take you much longer. Again, that 45 minutes per kilometer is a rough estimation and it's a starting point for you to work off of until you know your way of navigation and travel a little bit better and then you can make more accurate assessments. We also want to ride out the final destination in great detail. Think that you're talking. You're gonna ride it out as explicitly as you possibly can. We want to know the shape of the feature that we're trying to get to. We want to know the size. We want to know the surrounding vegetation. We want to know uh, everything that we could see from that point. But we should also be hearing from that point. And lastly, we also want to be giving ourselves a backdrop. Now, backdrop is a distinctive feature that we can write down and be certain that if we hit this, we will not miss it. And if you do hit it, it lets us know that we need to stop, reassess, and adjust fire in order to get you back to your destination. All of these are just tools, and a tool is only as effective as the one actually utilizing them. So practice. You can use our free map worksheets in order to create your checklists for yourselves uh, using the points that are provided, or you can make up your own. If you want to get some real world experience and guidance, go ahead and sign up for one of our Survival 102 classes uh, where it's a full weekend of land navigation, tips and tricks in the field. We can find all of this at our website at agonicllc.com or in our store linked below. Along with all the other fun, cool things that we're going to have there for sale as well to, uh, you know, do all the stuff. As long as the scale that you're utilizing of your map is the same or propor proportionate, well, actually, no, it, it points to magnetic north, not true north.